Hello guys, uh, this is an update to the workflow for creating a first person sprint animation. Uh, when you create a sprint animation or loops in general, I would recommend that you structure the movements. Uh, and by that, uh, I mean uh, developing it step by step in layers so you can isolate particular movements. Uh, so in this example, we have the side to side movement in one layer, uh, the up and down in another layer, maybe some uh, variation you know, within the sprint in this layer that I decided to call stabilize. We come back to this layer. Uh, and this layer, for example, could contain the shakes that occurs when uh, the player takes a step. So if you were to animate uh, one of these isolated motions from scratch in a layer, uh, for example, the the side to side motion, you know, go, you know doing something like this, uh, you would first do a f you know make a keyframe at the beginning in the timeline at frame zero, and then you know, move this fella you know uh, a bit over here in the middle, and then copy the first key and paste it at the end so you have a clean loop uh, so you know th this is basically the start of that of that motion you also need obviously rotation as well in this axis but in this example I'm only gonna show the translate uh, so uh, what the curves look like in this case is uh, this basically uh, so even though it's a uh, clean you know motion going y only side to side it's still uh, uh, presented in with free curves and this is not optimal and uh, there is a better way of doing this uh, so the keys uh, look more organized and I'm going to show you how so the trick I'm going to show you how to work in a more structured manner uh, is uh, this uh, most animators I would assume have a weapon controller for their weapon uh, but what I'm gonna do is uh, having an additional controller that I in this case name uh, global controller uh, and I will align that controller so it's at the exact same position as your standard you know weapon controller uh, and then I'm going to grab the original weapon controller and parent that to the global controller. Uh, so what that does is you now control uh, the weapon and also the weapon controller uh, with you know this new uh, controller that is higher in the hierarchy. If we were to do the same motion again from scratch, uh, if you remember the side to side motion, uh, the first thing you would do with this new setup is uh, bringing the weapon to where you want to be in the screen, you know, the sprint position, uh, and create a new layer. And then you go back again to your original weapon controller and do the motion on that one. Uh, so if you remember the side to side motion was something like this. Uh, so now we have you know done that motion again but if we look at the curves this motion is presented with only one curve before it was free and this is much easier now to tweak you know if you want larger uh, or slower uh, so this is much uh, more organized and easier to work with so the default layers I personally use uh, as a default uh, in my sprint loops uh, are these uh, and we can go through them uh, one by one. So if we start with the up and down motion, it uh, looks, l looks like this uh, and the only curves I'm working in here is uh, the up and down translation which is Y. Uh, and the X rotation, uh, which is offset, by the way, with three frames from uh, where the translation keys are. So you kind of have that 
not slow in the bounciness in the steps. And if we go to the next layer, uh, that would would be side to side motion, and this is uh, made up by the x translation curve of the side to side and the corresponding rotation curves to you know make this smooth uh, motion from you know kind of representing the strides in the cycle uh, and if we look at these together uh, they you know work in symbiosis uh, so uh, yeah, you obviously you know you have to go back and forth to see what you're doing uh, I also have a layer with the shakes, you know, from the steps. So if I isolate this uh, layer, uh, it looks like this, and it's it's it's, it's the jitter, so you kind of get you know the weight and you know the fidelity in the sprint cycle. Uh, it looks a lot more interesting, I think, when you you have these small small motion uh, working, you know simultaneously as uh, the big motions happen. Uh, I also have lastly as a default a uh, motion like this uh, and it uh, doesn't look you know very interesting here but it gives that less mechanical kind of feeling in the sprint animation. Uh, so if I turn all of these off except that one you, I mean, it looks uh, decent, but with this on, you get a bit more, I don't know, like, uh, it's hard to describe what exactly it does, but I do feel like it's balancing the sprint animation a bit and makes it a bit less repetitive, even though it's just, you know, a single loop. If you work in this kind of setup with the your weapon controller parented to uh, an additional controller uh, like this the motion centers around that additional controller uh, so uh, that makes it super easy to pose your sprint animation uh, you know later on so, uh, so if you maybe you know want to have a pose more like this you no, it, it's not gonna wreck your animation since uh, the animation is in here and uh, uh, orienting from that point rather than the whole scene. Uh, so uh, this is incredibly you know, handy. Uh, so you, uh, maybe you want to reuse your sprint animation with another weapon uh, with uh, uh, you know vastly different shape so maybe that pose doesn't work for that weapon then you can you know just move the global controller instead and you know kind of find a pose uh, that you you know works better and you can also duplicate some of these layers if you want uh, twice the amount of motion uh, so if we duplicate these two for example You know, have a have a much more you know wilder anim animation, and if this is too wild, you know you can just you know select them and weigh them weight them down a bit until you find you know the amount you like. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's it for the video, and uh, yeah, I hope you find this uh, you know interesting or helpful. Thanks.